Welcome back to the Young Shakespeare Podcast. Today, I have the pleasure of talking to the Hopkinton boys basketball team. I've got Zach Hyman, Nate Casper, and Evan Mirazimi. Guys, thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Yeah, thank you for having us. Um, it's been a wild season, absolutely crazy in TVO basketball. Tell me a little bit about how your season's been so far. Uh, well, our season started off uh, really well with the big win against Westboro for our home opener. And then uh, we kind of got into some COVID trouble. So we didn't play for like a week and a half and we didn't practice for most of winter break. So we were off for a bunch of that. And then we came back and then played a tough Norwood team and lost to them or well, that was before break and lost to them, which uh, it was a, it was a tough game. Went right down to the wire mm -hmm. in overtime. And then we were off for a little bit. And then uh, we had Ashland at home and uh, that was a pretty, pretty good win. And then uh, we lost to, was it Westwood next? Yeah, we lost to Westwood. Tough game. Um, or it was DS first. Yeah, we lost to DS and then we lost to Westwood. Uh, back to back. Yeah. And then yeah. Dedham last night. Yeah. Tell me about the game last night, most recently. You guys caught a nice win. How did how did that go down? What was the, the key to winning? Um, so we got kind of got off to a slow start. We were playing good defense. Um, you know, and uh, our shots just weren't falling, but we had a positive mindset. We knew that like the shots would start to fall. And if we kept up the defensive intensity that, you know, if the shots started to fall, that we'd come back. And uh, we started a little run in the third quarter and uh, we ended up pulling it back and winning by eight. Yeah, that momentum is crazy. What did you guys see out of the Dedham team? What were their strengths? What were the weaknesses? What do you think they brought to the table? They were uh, just like really athletic and just like a really like gritty, tough team with like guys that could do a bunch of things. Like their guards were good. Their inside game was good. They were just, and they were just like a tough team, tough inside and everything. But. Yeah. Zach, how about you? What did you see last night in the game? Yeah, they had a solid uh, big man, number 24, who um, was kind of picking apart our two, three zone at the start. Um, he had a nice little catch and shoot mid range, getting inside. But yeah, they were pretty tough, and um, we just had to play a little tougher. Yeah, true. Obviously, super frustrating with COVID. You guys, like you said, taking a period of time off. You know what? What did you guys do during that time? Do you are you dribbling the basketball in your driveway? Like, how do you deal with not being able to practice with your guys? Well, uh, me and Evan, we. Uh, never got COVID, but half the team did. And I know a couple guys were really sick or had some bad, bad symptoms. So they were kind of just hanging out, just hanging out in bed and stuff. But the guys that could practice, we would still like do stuff every day and like try and get together and do stuff. Mm. When practice came back. It was like, we'd have like seven guys one day and then an eight guy, an eighth kid, uh, guy would come back and then a ninth. It was just like every day we'd get more and more players, but it was just challenging having like that seven man practice. Yeah, that's crazy. And then um, did, have you guys had like reduced capacity for your attendance and stuff like that? Yeah, so for our like past couple of games, we only had like two spectators per person, like our home game against DS. Uh, we didn't have any fans. It was just the parents. But um, when we played in Westwood, there was, um, there was fans. And this Tuesday against Bellingham, we should have fans again. Nice, nice. Yeah, tell me a little bit about um, that Westwood team. It's kind of a crazy team. They knocked off Needham, who is traditionally one of the, you know, top 10 teams in Eastern Massachusetts. That's, they got Rust Olabaney, Kyle Murray, you know, what did you see out of that Westwood team? Um, I think that Westwood team just plays with like a lot of intensity. I think that was the first team this year that has given us a lot of pressure, um, like on the ball, like they're like really nitty on, uh, like, like gritty on defense. And they put a lot of uh, pressure on the ball in us, uh, on us. And I think that we didn't really uh, deal with that well because it's something that we hadn't seen yet. Um, so I think that caused a lot of turnovers and, and they leaked out and they were like playing with super fast pace. And I just don't think that we were used to that. Mm -hmm. um, so we would obviously want to be able to play them again. And I think we, I think we do later yeah, in the season um, and try and get that game back. But overall, that team, like they have shooters, they have inside guys, they can kind of do it all. And then they just play really good defense, really solid. Yeah, they do have a bunch of shot makers and kids that can create their own shots. Mm, interesting. And then, so correct me if I'm wrong. So in the TVL 
you guys play every team in the TVL twice or just the TVL large teams? Uh, we play the TVL large twice and then small ones. Interesting. Yeah, I kind of like that system. And then are you guys competing for a separate title of like TVL large or is it just the TVL in general? Like, is there a TVL small champion and a large champion? Yeah, it's a large and a small champion. Okay. Would you guys be in favor of a tournament or do you, would you like regular season? To I would determine the winner. It would be pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> that would be sick. Can you yeah. imagine that? You get a big bracket and just seat everyone. Yeah. What are there, 12 teams? So you could do like four teams get a, a bye and then eight teams go in the first round or something like that. That would be wild. Yep. Play, play all around the TBL. Yeah. Get some fans and stuff. That would be wild. Um, and then, so you guys have kind of an interesting setup too where – your court is in that uh, it's in like the middle of an indoor track, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And then is it, is the court a different texture than like the surrounding area? Explain that to me. Uh, yeah. It's just like a normal court floor surrounded mm -hmm. by the track, but um, they don't really cross, you know, you can't really feel any weird feelings on the court, but um. <laughs> Where our like bench is set up, it's like kind of on more track material. Do you guys practice at the same time as the indoor track team or separate times? Uh, there's some days where we practice at the same time as them. So it's like really hectic in the gym, but we put curtains down. And so it's like pretty private, but it's still really loud. Mm. Yeah, because isn't the I, I, I swear to God, Hopkinton has the most has the largest indoor track team in TVL history. They have like 200 kids on their team. Is that right? Yeah, our track team is crazy. <laughs> I mean, I imagine if you walk by that facility every day at school, you might think about doing track. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. What got all you guys into basketball? Let's go like one-on-one. -on -one. Like each one of you tell me a little bit about when you got involved in basketball and kind of what your like varsity story is when you made the varsity team at Hopkinton. Um, so I think when I got started with basketball, it was just like I kind of have a sport. I have a sport court at <laughs> house so from a young age I was just like playing outside a lot you know just like doing my own thing and then I think I started doing like summer camps like Nike basketball summer camps you know a lot and uh that's actually where I, I met my AAU coach uh Alex um from Middlesex and so I feel like that just like kind of started my whole basketball career and I started uh playing like AAU in like the more like local with the more local teams like Blazers and stuff and then I just like kind of branched out from there um and like just continue to improve. And, in the, and then I had a big growth spurt. So that kind of helped me out. Um, so I think that in the last like just couple of years, I've really improved a lot. And then so I started, uh, I played varsity last year um, as a sophomore. Uh, I got some decent minutes and then now I'm onto my junior year. So that's the story. Your buddies are laughing a little bit about that growth spurt part. How much did you grow? Um, so I was like 5'10 freshman year. And by sophomore year, I was like 6'3". <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I'd imagine that would help. Yeah. What did you, did you guys see a difference in his, is in his uh, play when he grew five inches? Yeah. He became a little more dominant. <laughs> he also became more athletic. So it was just like kind of crazy. Did you have to transition um, positions at all, Evan? Like with being five ten, were you maybe thinking, Oh, I'm going to be like a guard and then more, you're like more of a small forward now. Um. Not honestly, not really. Um, even when I was like five ten, I was usually one of the large, like one of the bigger, taller people on my team. So I was always kind of that like interior force. And I feel like it was actually like more of the other way around. I, I like as I got taller and stuff, I've like um, started to work more on my guard skills. So I feel like actually like the other way around, if that makes sense. Interesting. So now you're just sort of like a well sized guard. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah that's what I would say. How would you describe your your style of play to people that have never seen you? Um, so I I do I do shoot a lot of threes. I play I play like outside in. Um, I'm not like the like most scrappy player inside. I like to take it like I like to take drives, but I'm not like the traditional big man that like just stays in the paint. Like I, I work outside in most of the time. I'd say. Here's a question for a guy that shoots three pointers that I always wonder about. Like, to what extent do you like do you get reamed out if you take a bad three? Or is it kind of just like shoot or shoot? Um, I think it depends on the shot and, and the time at which the shot is taken. Um, like if I take a shot early in the shot clock, 
like one pass in a shot and I like it goes nowhere close you know obviously <laughs> I think that that's obviously you know not a good shot um but I think for the most part like shooters are going to shoot you know you have to keep shooting to keep that confidence up like you have to keep shooting um to, to be able to make shots and if you're not making shots like the only thing you can do is keep shooting well, yeah one of the guys I uh interviewed Brevin Galloway from the Boston College basketball team and I'm doing an extra follow-up with him when he comes to Raleigh um he missed like nine he was like or no he was like two for 11 or something against the uh University of North Carolina and but that's what he does he's a shooter so he just keeps shooting and then he bounced back and against um who did he just dropped 18 on someone but he's basically coming off an ACL He's a three-point shooter. He misses shots that game, but he just keeps shooting. He's just got that confidence. And that's that's crazy to me that people can do that because I I was never a great shooter, and I can't imagine missing like that and, and keeping going. What do you tell yourself mentally when you're having one of those nights where you don't feel, like, hot? Um. I, 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 just, I just trusted my, you know, ability. I think that if I miss a couple shots, in a row or I get on like a bad streak or something. I know that if I keep shooting, the shots are going to have to fall. Eventually I kind of just let it roll off me, get back on the defensive end, try and play good defense and make up for it in other ways. If I'm having a bad night and then mm -hmm. I'll keep shooting. You know, I, I, that's kind of just what I tell myself. Yeah. And then you talked about going in for the drive. Do you have a go-to finish? Do you like a reverse layup or a floater? How do you like to get it done once you get to the paint? Um, usually I like to just like go up on the right side, like strong, um, uh, I love going like from left to right on a spin. That's usually like the go-to move if I'm trying to get to the hoop. Yeah. Cool. And then, um, Nate, how about you? Tell us a little bit about how you got into playing basketball and at what point you made varsity. Uh, well, I got into basketball really young. Like my dad just loved the game. So he would always just like, I'd always be around it kind of. And he would like coach my like fourth grade rec team where we would just practice. And then like Evan, I would get into some summer camps. And then as I would get older, I'd like play for the middle school team and travel teams. And then AAU was introduced to me and I played AAU all the way throughout high school. And then I was on varsity my junior year and started the whole year and then now senior year. Damn. So wait, when was your first varsity start? Uh, junior year. What was, what was going through your head that first time getting on the court, getting the start? Were you excited, nervous? How did that feel? Uh, I was excited. I was uh, really like, I wasn't really nervous. It was more like anxious to just like get going. Mm -hmm. But like, I felt like I was pretty confident in just like in what I do and like my ability. Yeah. And then which AAU team did you say you've been playing for? Uh, I played for ASA. Cool. Tell, tell me a little bit about that program. Uh, I've been playing for them since uh, spring of freshman year. And uh, I played with one coach at the start, which was same as his coach. But then uh, I transferred to a, like the Boston location, which I was originally like out of like a local in like South Bro out of St. Mark's. So then I went to Boston and got a whole new coach and a whole new team. And we were really good, like, but then COVID hit and we would have to travel to like New Hampshire to play, which was kind of frustrating. But uh, after that, a bunch of kids left because of COVID and we had a really good spring season this year or fall season this year. And maybe I'll play spring, I'm not sure yet, but. Mm -hmm been really good with coach smith at uh asa that's awesome and then because you touched on covid there like last year you know when you were a starter junior starter on the team what do you you know is there i mean what what would your expectations have been if there had been a full season for you guys to play i know it was sort of shortened do you think that was a hopkinton team that could have you know done a little stuff you know postseason wise uh i think we definitely had the like the skill and the potential to, to do something special. I mean, last season we played Westwood four times. <laughs> That's you know, tough. Nine games. So it was kind of weird. And they were, they had a really good season last yeah. year. McGowan. Who was that? Yeah. Where is he playing? I, that name I've heard a bunch of times. Yeah. He plays at Bowdoin. Okay. Yeah. But we played Damn. that four times. Uh, it was kind of just tough. Cause we were also affected last year uh, from COVID. We were out for two weeks. So it was kind of just the whole year we were just trying to get back into it, but playing Westwood four times didn't really help us. <laughs> Dude.
<laughs> that's like a nightmare. They just yeah. that's like the guy. Like, that's like the guy in hell that has to keep pushing the boulder up the hill and then it rolls back down. <laughs> it was like by the, like the third game, like we all like knew each other, like we knew what everyone was gonna do. Was Damn. Like, yeah. yeah, and that what is. So here's a good question for you. In seeing the teams, you know, they lose that guy, Jack McGowan, I think you said, um, who I'd heard of before, but I don't know that well. What surprised you about this team? I think one thing people are maybe speculating about is that Russ Dolabany has significantly improved since last season. Yeah, I've known Russ for a little while. He's he's really good. He's a good player. And uh, he's definitely uh, doing a really good job with that team along with the other seniors that are uh, leading it over there. But uh, yeah, Russ is, he's improved a lot. Was Kyle Murray in the game when you guys played against them? Yeah, Kyle Murray, uh, I think he was the leading scorer. Yeah. But he, he was, he was good. Yeah. I know he was dealing with some sort of um, yeah, he had injury like or, earlier on in the season. What, sorry, what was that? He had like an ankle or leg injury, something like that. That sucks. Yeah. I, you hate that. And ankles are just, they kind of just like fester. They kind of just stay there. Especially if you're here. Oh, is yeah. it this guy? Tell He's me about your ankles. Um, so in my first, uh, in the first five minutes of my first AAU game of the fall season, you know, I went up to block a shot after the whistle and I ended up landing on this kid's foot and my ankle like went more than 90 degrees. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, at, at first I thought it was going to be like, you know, like a, the regular sprained ankle. I ended up having three fractures and a high and low ankle sprain, like pretty bad. Jesus. Uh, yeah, so I've been out for about four months now, and I just started getting back into practice and started playing again. Wow. How do you, how do you best mend something like that? Is it just rest or are there physical therapy things you can do? Um, so for the most, so I was in a cast for two weeks um, right off the bat. They wanted to completely immobilize it because obviously I was in a lot of pain. Um, and then after the cast, I was in a boot on crutches for a while. I ended up taking off the boot and then I started physical therapy. At first, um, the main thing in this physical therapy was the mobility to try and get the mobility back because I could like literally like barely move my ankle whatsoever. Um, so we worked on that for a while. Um, and then we began to start, start the strengthening. So, you know, it was a long process and it was really hard. And like, even now, like when I play, I still have to get it um, taped and then I have to put a brace over the tape. Um, and it's like still kind of like scary to play just like, cause you like, get that feeling that it could happen again. And yeah, so it's been tough. Jesus. So where are you, where are you at now with what you can do with it? Um, so I'm definitely not a hundred percent. I'd say I'm probably about 75 to 80% of like what I was in terms of like my ankle um, cutting and stuff. I, I, I still get a little pain here and there. Um, definitely with the, with the preventative measures, like the tape and the brace, it makes it a lot, a lot better. Um, but in terms of like basketball stuff, I think like I still have a long way to go before I'm back to where it was before. You ever take Advil just so you won't have to worry about it and stuff? Yeah, me and Nate are actually big proponents of Advil. <laughs> <laughs> Get these boys a sponsorship, man. <laughs> before the game, I always I always take Advil so that it'll just reduce the pain, you know. But yeah. I just remember uh, I played a year of high school football. I play is loose. I was on the freshman team. Um, but I just remember there were a few guys that I was just like, they were taking lethal doses of Advil so that they, they like, who goes like, I can't feel my shoulder. And then he'd just take like 10 or 12 or 14 Advil or something before the game. I was like, Oh my God, like, I hope your liver is going to be okay. Or kidney or whatever process is that, but it's crazy. I mean, some people I get scared. I take like two and I'm like, all right, I hope I'm, hope I'm good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I only take, like, uh, the doctors told me to take three for pain, so that's, like, what I've been doing, but I try not to take medicine as much as possible, because obviously, like you said, it can have some side effects and stuff, yeah. Yeah, do you think you built up a tolerance now? Like, could you go Advil for Advil with anyone in the TBL or what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that much, but I definitely know I'm an, an experienced Advil user <laughs> my injuries, yeah. Man crazy and then Zach tell me a little bit about how you got involved in basketball and kind of when you got your chance to play varsity too yeah so I mean I was just playing like starting like travel in fourth grade like everyone else I mean I was never really that good I was always on the B team uh I got cut from the team my eighth grade year um I didn't really <laughs> play freshman year but then um just over the summer going to the courts just playing with my friends 
I started uh, every game JV year, my sophomore year. And then uh, this year is my first year on varsity. And uh, I think I'm getting some solid minutes. So uh, yeah, it's just been a process. Word. That's one thing I've heard a bunch of times. I always close every podcast and ask the people, hey, what would one piece of advice be to someone that was, you know, a younger kid or early high school kid and they wanted to be like you and do this or that in sports? And some of the times the answers I get are basically don't worry about where you're at when you're in middle school especially in basketball, because so much can change and so many things can turn around. Um, and that is definitely a testament to like the guy I did um, my uh, podcast with last night streaming the DS versus Medfield game. His name is Brett Stark. He ended up being the best player in the Tri-Valley League total. Um, he was on the DS state championship team in 2019, and he was on the B team in sixth grade. So for people out there thinking, hey, this team or this placement or whatever determines my, you know, total athletic career. That's bullshit because you can do so much. You can do so much. And what, what was the journey for you from, you talked a little bit about the summer before freshman year, but yeah, talk, get more in depth about going from the B team to being a varsity player and what that took. Yeah. So um, I, uh, I always had fun on the B team. I mean, I was one of the guys on that team, but I mean, uh, freshman year, um, or no, eighth grade year, actually. I was on the A team for my first year, but I was the only guy on that team that didn't make the eighth grade team. I got cut from that team and uh, it kind of bummed me out, but um, I just like, just made me want to work harder. And then freshman year, just freshman, sophomore year, playing with like these two guys at the course, just like playing some good comp, obviously made me better. And yeah, just keep my head down and get better. Yeah, so you were working with these guys over the summer. Is that are you doing pickup runs? What kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, uh, we went over to Evans' house a couple of times. He has that sport court in his backyard. We'd uh, work out there, and we got these courts up town where we'd get some pickup games, which is pretty fun. I think everyone benefits from those. Mm, damn. And then um, tell me a little bit about your style of play. How would you describe yourself for someone that's never seen you play? Yeah, I mean, I guess you could say I'm kind of just a catch and shoot guy. I kind of just spot <laughs> up in the corner till Nate hits me and then I just shoot the three ball. <laughs> yeah, so you like to avoid dribbling? I mean, I can dribble here and there. I mean, I played point guard my whole year until like the uh, past couple of years because I mean, I'm a smaller guy. So I find my strength in shooting outside. So I like to just stick to what I'm good at. What's the key to shooting a good three pointer? Um. I mean, I just like to zone out all the noise and just take a breath and just shoot. Like, can't think about it, can't hesitate, got to just shoot. Crazy. Interesting. I'd be curious to hear, I interviewed um, the Hopkinton um, girls volleyball team a little while back. Were, did you guys travel to that state championship and get to see them play? Uh, yeah. Actually, I went to, like, every game. Like, they went all the way down to Barnstable, and, like, me and a bunch of buddies went out there. But that state championship game was crazy. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome that you guys would travel too. What did yeah. you well, what did you make of that season? Did you get into volleyball? I'm I'm assuming you didn't have a background in it before. I had no clue. Like we would we went to the very first game and like we had a, a decent student section and like the ref would make a call and we'd all start cheering, but then we were like, oh wait, like the other <laughs> So like it was just like, but then like as the season went on, we'd like understand it more. And like me personally, I learned the rules. And uh, like learning about the game, like it kind of just got more and more fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. And then that's that's one thing too that the uh, the girls are telling me, Kate and um, I don't know, I can't remember the others' names. I'm sure I do, but um, Melanie, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Catherine. Yep. Yeah. Oh, three for three. Okay, I know their names. Um, they were saying like the student section would be like abusive to the referee over like a good call. <laughs> They would be like, that's bullshit. Like, that's a terrible call. And they're like, oh, that's, that's all right. Yeah, after the game, they would tell us, they'd be like, I don't know why you guys are complaining about that. Like, we got the point. <laughs> like, oh, wait, like, oh. So then tell me about the state championship. Did, did all three of you guys go or just Nate to the state title? There, yeah. Um, I personally didn't go. I was doing homework. Uh, oh, wow. Was, um, homework. I don't, wow. I don't stop. But, you know, I was, I was rooting from home. Yeah. Rooting from home. <laughs> it's a state title. It's history. 
you know, what can I say? Margie's last game. Are you kidding me, dude? You weren't there for that? <laughs> oh, my God. So then, yeah, the boys that uh, weren't doing homework, tell me what the experience was like seeing a Hopkinton State Championship. It was just, like, the energy. Like, I've never been a part of, like, something with that energy. Like, mm -hmm. every point was just, like, so crucial. And then they went like set for set. And then we ended up winning like two sets in a row to win it. And after we got that last point, the last set to win it, it was, it was crazy. Like everybody tried storming the court. Like we had like 10 teachers, like blocking us off. <laughs> yeah. It uh, got me very excited for basketball season. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask if you, why didn't you storm the court? But apparently, apparently you did try to storm. Yeah, we, we definitely did try. That's actually wild. Yo, when DS won the state title in basketball at Holy Cross, we were like fucking a hundred kids were all trying to push through and they're like this big fat security guy was like, you're not getting by me. Like with an MIA, like tag like <laughs> necklace. He's like, you're not getting by me kids. I'm not my first rodeo, but our DS was like the sixth seed. So after we beat Wittensville Christian, I don't know if you guys remember Justin Vanderbond, the seven footer. Yeah. He's on BC now. Uh, John Muckstat shut him down to like four or six points. And I, I ran out onto the court and then I was like, fuck, like, please follow me. Cause I was at the front of the student section. And I was like, you guys better follow me and not leave me out here running on my own. So I stormed the court and luckily the people did follow me. And the Dover Sherman coach was like, you know, it was a big win. Second round of the playoffs. He was like, get off the court, get off the court. He, I think he didn't want them to get disqualified or something. So we leave. And then as I'm walking out after the principal was like, Bennett, come over here. And I was like, oh shit. So I walk over. He goes, he goes, um, he goes, just make sure everyone like behaves themselves in the parking lot. I was like, yeah, yeah, I can do that. I can, I can make sure no one misbehaves. Or <laughs> so I thought he was about to be like, you were the guy that just like had everyone storm the court. Like you're in so much trouble, but luckily, uh, luckily it ended up okay. I mean, that's, you know, state title. It's crazy. Wh who are some of the players that, I mean, maybe Nate can speak to this because now he's the expert on volleyball. Who are some of the good players for Hopkinton? Uh, well, Kate Powers was like, one of the top. And then we had Sam Berenson. I think they were both like, I know Kate Powers was like division two volleyball girl of the year or something. Wow. Sam Berenson was like another big, she got another big like accomplishment. And then they were just like, their whole team was honestly just like, they're all really good. Like they all had like really good chemistry and stuff like that. So it was, it was like really fun to watch. What would you, would you say there's any parallels between watching volleyball and basketball or not so much? Uh, I don't know, it's kind of a tough question. I feel like both have like really high energy. Like every, every like set and like every play is like high energy. Like that's like one similarity. But basketball, I feel like is more like nonstop. But I, I don't, you got a comment on that? I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of time when it's like match point in volleyball, like once that ball goes up, like someone's gonna score. Mm -hmm. Like in basketball, like maybe there could be a couple possessions where there's no uh, no basket, but I mean in volleyball, like something's going to happen in that possession. Who are some of the you know, assuming you guys used to go to the games and stuff like most towns, who are some of the varsity basketball players in you know Hopkinton history? Maybe when you were middle school or early high school that you guys looked up to or or thought you liked their style or how they played? Well, uh, uh, my sophomore year and their freshman year, our varsity team went all the way to like the sectional finals. From, uh, they lost to Wayland. But uh, their guard, Tommy Ambersoni and like Stephen Maffiori, like they were really running the show. And like obviously watching them, like I learned some things from them and looked up to them. And then that's all I really remember from my high school year. Freshman year, they also ran the show as juniors. So it was like, I just was always watching them in like eighth grade year. Tommy was starting as a sophomore. So I just remember always watching him just like running the show. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that um, Travis Finfrock was also on that team. Um, and, and he was like, I feel like he, I kind of like modeled my game after him a little bit. He, he liked to shoot the three, but he could also get to the basket. And I just like really liked the way he played. So, yeah. Yeah, and a guy on the team last year, uh, Brian Keefe. I think I play like him a little bit. I mean, Nate would always hit him in the corner for some threes, so I'm trying to be like that this year. Damn. Would you guys rather be faster or taller? 
right now I feel like I'm I'm definitely fat more faster than taller so <laughs> if I could get taller and keep like my same amount of like speed and quickness like that that'd be awesome <laughs> but I mean obviously I'm like oh like I wonder what it's like being a big man like being inside in the post and being like six five and like six six <laughs> yeah I mean, I'm sure he thinks that too. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm not really fast or tall, so <laughs> maybe both. Um, I think that height is a good thing to have, but I think you need to like know how to use it a little bit. Um, so personally, I think that being faster would, would be better, but that, I guess that's because I am kind of taller on the taller side that I, I want to be able to be uh, like super fast along with that because I don't really like know what it's like to be smaller and not taller. I don't know. I didn't really answer that. <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> not a yeah, it's an interesting question. So uh, it's it's an interesting question. It's like yeah, when you, like then like if you can do both, like you're an NBA player, like Lamelo Ball, six seven, but the dude moves like he's a five ten quick, like Showtime can do all this different stuff, absolutely crazy. You guys, I know I was surprised to hear there's a mixed bag about people rooting for the Patriots here. It disgruntled me a little bit but who do you guys root for the celtics or who do you root for in the nba celtics celtics 100%. Yeah, yeah. okay what do you think of the team this year <laughs> disappointing <laughs> in the least definitely not uh, living up to how i thought they'd be playing this season but yeah every year i say uh celtics win the championship this year <laughs> but <laughs> it's not gonna happen <laughs> Yeah, they just they just frustrate me. Like they just give up big leads and like even against like the Pacers, like I don't know, five days ago or so, they like gave up like a 12 point lead like late in the fourth and had to win in overtime. And then obviously against the Knicks, didn't they give up like 20 something points? And then earlier in the season they did the same thing. Like it's just not a team that like we are the team that's consistently getting beat in the last second by a great shot. We're not the ones like icing the game with like clutch team play. Right. I think that also like they've just been super like inconsistent. Like, you know, one game they'll win by like 20 and we're like, wow, like that's the Celtics we know. Right. And then the next game they'll lose by 20 to like a bummy team, you know, like to one of the, like, <laughs> the, teams at, like the bottom of the standings. And you're like, well, like what's the consistency there? Like, come on. If uh like Brad Stevens and Danny Ainge just handed you guys like the key the keys to the Celtics and was like you three are running the pro you're running the show now what would you guys what steps would you take to fix the Celtics? Well, I'd probably just like trade for Curry. <laughs> <laughs> Great call. <laughs> no, but uh, seriously, um, I mean, obviously, I wouldn't be able to do something like that, but um, obviously. I don't know if it's something fixable in like the front office. I mean, I don't think we've had like a full roster really for more than like 10 games this season, like with the COVID and the injuries, like I think Jalen Brown just got back, but maybe make some trades here and there. Hmm. Yeah. I think you got to get rid of uh Brown or Tatum, keep one, get rid of the other. Interesting. Cause you think, you think cause they're ball dominant or why? I think they both are pretty ball dominant. Like they both need to like, get a certain amount of shots up. And I feel like if we could trade for just like players that could just produce more than just points. Yeah. I think going off of that a little bit, like we've had like Tatum and Brown for like so long and we've, and we've like waited to see if they could like work it out and like play off each other really well. And I think that hasn't been working out as well. So either like try and get them to be on the same page along with the rest of the team or just trade one of them away and, and start fresh. Cause I think we have like the Celtics have plenty the like the talent is there. I think it's just like the cohesiveness of the team that, you know, lacks a little bit. Interesting. Yeah. I think you guys all make good points really quick. I want to get um, a prediction for tonight's game. Bills versus the Pats. What, what are you guys saying? This will come out after the game's over. So you're either going to look smart or dumb. So give me a prediction, the score Bills versus Pats. Uh, Bills versus Pats. I'm going to go 35, 27 Patriots. Wow. I'm going to go 28, 21 Pats. Okay. And then I'm going to go 21, uh, 17 Pats. Ooh, okay. So the, the over-under is really – it's in trouble here. We got some high-scoring games, some low-scoring games. I'm going to give it – I'm going to give it uh, 28, 24 Patriots. That's what I think. 
that's what I think. Um, I don't know if we're gonna be able to put that many points on the board. It's a, it's supposed to be really cold in Buffalo, isn't it? Too. Yeah, like not I, like not I, annually. I mean, like today, it's really cold. Yeah, I was going for more of a of a lower scoring game. I feel like it's gonna be a def- a defensive game, but. Yeah, how about like last time with Buffalo, Mac Jones throwing the ball three times? Right. Crazy. So tell me a little bit, guys, about the coaching staff at Hopkinton basketball. What's the leadership style like? What's the coaching style like? Just uh, give me a rundown. Uh, well, Coach Keen's been coaching there for like 20 plus years. And he's been coaching along with uh, Coach Golden, who's also been there for 20 plus years. And then our uh, varsity assistant coach, Coach uh, Banks been there for he's been there for a long time too that's a sick name for a basketball coach if i can interrupt thanks thanks okay there you go yeah but uh they've always had like winning seasons and like getting teams into the tournament and they all have like this idea of like how we play like pillar basketball like we're always gonna play tough like we're always gonna be first to the floor always gonna like get out in the open floor and run like transitions like our should be our main like source of points but like Coach Keenan, Coach Banks, and Coach Golden, and now our JV coach, uh, Coach Godet, like they all have like this good picture of how like they want to play, and it's like a really great picture. And I think if we just like they lead it really well, and I think if we just listen to them and take in their coaching, we could have a really good season. What do you? How would you describe um, what their version of Hiller basketball is? Is it? tenacity teamwork hustle what kind of things do they, are they picturing when they think of how the pillar basketball is played honestly it's all of that but like their main what they preach the most is just like hustle and effort like they want to be like the toughest team out there like the most conditioned and like stuff like that like they want you like matching up full court man to man like getting in your guys face like first on the floor everything like that Zach and Evan, what would you guys say about uh, about Nate's comments and about Hopkinton basketball and the coaches? I think that I agree with Nate. There's like a certain way that they expect us to play. And, you know, it's worked for them in the past. And so, you know, it'll definitely work for us in the future. I think that the, uh, all the coaches, you know, they preach toughness a lot. And I think that's something that we struggle with a little bit this season is getting tough and, and not get, and getting the re, and getting rebounds and stuff. Um, but I think if we all buy into to what they're saying, that we'll have a great season. And I think we just we're all figuring that out right now on the defensive end with the tough, toughness and the hustle and the getting out in transition because those, those are like the main aspects of pillar basketball for sure. Yep. Yeah, I mean, he likes to play a certain way with the guys we got. I mean, it helps having Nate doesn't ever get tired. So we like to press like all game long and just um, just out tough the other team. Nate, you don't get tired? Uh, I'll just say no, but, uh, I definitely get a little winded at some points. Wow. Do you do a lot of like conditioning? Do you, are you a guy that stays in shape or what, what makes, uh, helps you yeah, stay yeah. like that? I go for a bunch of runs. <laughs> Basketball <laughs> runs or jogging? Yeah, like, runs? like I used to run a whole bunch. Like I used to like eighth grade and freshman year, I would run like consistently. And like, now like I'll wait, uh, sometimes I'll wake up and run or like, Later on in the day, like go for like a, a two and a half mile run. And it's just like always just like being like I play basketball year round. So it's always just like being in basketball shape. Mm. So like I never really just like get out of basketball shape. So yeah, that's huge. I feel like so many more people should implement that. Yeah. Because I I I was a cross country and an indoor and outdoor track runner. Um, and you get an in incredible shape. Um, and sometimes you the the return on your investment can be on such a small thing like you running two and a half miles how good that is for your lungs and your heart yeah um it's tremendous the the value you can get out of that and how you can translate it to different sports so props to you and i think a lot of people should uh get get on that train too so you guys do you guys like to press um later in the game throughout the game what's that like uh throughout the game yeah, um, we, we're always a pressing team. We like to switch up our defenses a lot. You know, we'll go zone, um, we'll go man. We like to double. I mean, pretty much the whole game, we're trying to apply pressure on the ball and try and get teams uh, to turn it over because that's like, we want to be scoring the most in transition. And I think that that's one of the team, like one of the things that we do really good is just pressure on the ball and, you know, just trying to get teams to like make mistakes and, and, and give us easy points. 
Hmm. What kind of press do you run? Um, so we run like a, we run a one, three, one. We also do a one, two, two. We also do a two, one, two. We have like at least like four or five presses that we can run at any time. And then we obviously have our full court mans and our full court mans with doubles. And so, yeah, there's definitely a lot of different options that we have depending on the team we're playing and the personnel. Mm, yeah. Very cool. Do you guys recognize the referees at this point? I mean, playing varsity basketball for a minute. Yeah. Uh, they've also like repped us during like travel. Like, I feel like I've had like some of these guys since I've been in like seventh grade. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Do you start to know like, who's going to be a friend to you versus who's like a pain in the ass? Yeah. And then you start to know like, who's going to like be really like picky on their foul calls and who's going to like call everything and stuff like that. Like who you can talk, who you can like talk to a little bit. And then who, like, if you talk to like, they'll get mad at you and tee you up right away. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I won't ask you to call anyone out because just on the off chance that someone were to see this um, and <laughs> like, fuck that kid. Like, I'm going to call everything. Like, oh, my God. Sometimes it's it's crazy. I always see you never like – and believe me, I'm – props to the referees. It's a tough job. It's a job that um, is, is great. It keeps – you need it to have these sports happen, and people do it for not a ton of money. But I will say some referees, it's like the smallest amount of power can, like, go to their head. And they're just like, think they own the world. <laughs> How do you, we haven't had sorry, that, go ahead. Every ref, we've, every ref we've had this year has been pretty good, I feel like. How do you deal with a ref that isn't giving you calls? Do you just try to like shut up and play hard or do you like try to talk to them? Like, how do you work through that? Um, so, you know, coach always tells us that we shouldn't really be talking to the refs as much because, you know, obviously you said that they can go on a little power trip, you know, here and there. <laughs> um, but, you know, we try and stay away from the refs as much as we can and not complain about um, fouls because that's a that's a thing that our coach tells to us a lot is 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 the like is that body language is a super big thing. Like if you get upset about a call, the ref is more likely to give you a, a call in the future. Um, so if if we have like a bad ref, we just try and play through it, you know, go up strong on layups instead of trying to draw fouls, um, that type of stuff to like avoid them having to make a call. Yeah. If there was one game marked off on your calendar going forward that you just can't wait to play, what game would that be? Uh, I think Norwood, because that was like a right down to the wire, like went into overtime. We lost by four. But then also that Westwood game, because Westwood's like a really good team, but I know like how we played just does not – that's not how like how we usually play. Like we are we, – we played way worse than we are. Yeah. Like we are so much better than how we played. So that would be a – fun game to have again and also that norwood game is our uh, only friday night home game of the season so yeah that'll be exciting it's your only friday night home game yep. yeah we only have just like a fluke scheduling thing or what yeah the girls have like nine we have one <laughs> <laughs> that sucks <laughs> oh my god that sucks so you're and that that means too uh presumably you guys are going into hostile gyms yeah, when fans right. are back and when fans are there, you're you're spending a lot of time away on Fridays. Yeah, right. And even Definitely like you know, there's those select few kids that'll do homework instead of going to the games. Those kids won't be there, huh? <laughs> right. I think even though like even on the Tuesday night home games, even for us, like just because it's like a Tuesday night, I feel like less people show up in general. Like for us when we're home, so hopefully that Friday night home game against Norwood will be like packed. Like the gym will be packed, and you know there'll be like really good energy. True. Literally. I almost wish I caught you guys like later in the season because I, you know, I talked to a lot of the TBO basketball players and I feel like three and three, I'm sure you guys would agree with this, doesn't really represent like the level you guys are at. You've had some tough games. And I feel like down the road, we're going to, we're going to see a lot of good stuff and a lot more winning um, coming out of you guys. Yeah. yeah. What, what's the mindset now where knowing you are a strong team, that and all the talent and the potential you have to make big things happen and you've lost a few close ones what's the what's the message you guys have to each other about you know how to make things happen down the line well we just gotta all like the message we have to each other is just we just like all gotta stay close like the chemistry this year is like unmatched like we're all like really good with each other like we joke around all the time like in school like the chemistry is just really well like mm -hmm. just works really well so the main thing we preach now is just like the defensive end like we all, we know we can all, like we can all score, like, and our offense is not a problem, but it's just that defensive end. Yeah. 
I think up until the Westwood game, we were we were averaging like 70. And then, you know, we like we could not do anything against Westwood. We were we just didn't play good at all. But we were averaging about 70 on offense. And, you know, we were just giving up a lot of points on defense. And a lot of that was uh, problems with rebounding. So I think that uh, if we get that the defensive end figured out and really all buy in on defense and work as one unit, then we can we can achieve great things. Yeah. Yeah. That's the main message is just like working as one. Mm. Just like clicking with everybody. Because once we click, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be scary. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Sorry, were you gonna uh, say something? Yeah, again, what Nate said, like this team is like no other team I've played for before. Like just playing with like my best friends and like we're going like sledding together, going out to dinner like <laughs> every night. Yep. It's just like unmatched. Like we're like actually like a family. So win or loss, like I think we're doing great things and it's just super fun. Yeah, I love that. Can't wait to see going forward. Um, tell me a little bit about the mascot. Do you guys like being Hillers? To me, it sounds like kind of a dumb name, but do you like it? Uh, I mean, it is a pretty dumb name. I mean, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what our like mascot would be. And also like these guys were talking the other day, like how like some schools would be like, oh, like pack the den, like Westwood's like pack the den for like their student section. Yeah. He was saying like pack the what was it? Sharon, the Eagles are like pack the nest, but like we got nothing to pack. <laughs> like, we, like, pack, pack the hills, like I don't know. Yeah, Medfield has uh pack the peak. DS has the zone. Yeah. Everyone's got something. We were we were trying to figure out like what could our thing be like pack the what, but like literally nothing makes sense. Climb climb the hill or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's also like you get that like that opposing student section being like, what's a hiller? Because, like, what is a hiller? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I actually remember hearing that chant and stuff at games. Yeah, we get that all the time. Is that, <laughs> does that rattle you? Not really. I mean, I've been hearing it for so long, ever since going to, like, any Hopkinton game. So it's kind of just, like, it's kind of just funny, honestly, because, it's like, I agree with them. Like, what is a hiller? <laughs> like, none of us know. <laughs> Dude, the guy, the guy that thought of that must have been, like, I really did something here. You know, he must have just thought like that's a genius name. No one else is the Hillers. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what he was thinking, but at least I, there's the Clockers. That's kind of like consolation that there's another like kind of shit name. Yeah, that's yeah. like the one school we go to where like they can't say anything because like they're <laughs> what, <laughs> what? What did they make? It was it wasn't even like it was like an an analog clock or some. It was like a specific type of clock someone invented in Ashland, right? Or yeah, did they have a factory that made clocks? Something like that. I have no clue what it is, but I mean, for the Hillers, we don't even have a backstory of where the name comes from. We just kind of know that we're the Hillers, and that's like <laughs> like a pretty hilly town, I guess. I guess I don't see any hills. <laughs> you don't see any hills? <laughs> oh my goodness! Do you guys like having the marathon start in Hawkington? Yeah, it brings a lot of publicity to the town. Some clout. Yeah, it's kind of like our claim to fame, I guess. <laughs> like, where the, where the marathon starts. It's like, also good because, like, when I go somewhere else, they'll be like, oh, where are you from? I'm like, Hopkinton. They're like, oh, where's that? I'm like, oh, it's the start starts. of the Boston Marathon. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it literally puts you on the map. Yeah. Right. See, the, like, all those T-shirts that are, like, Hopkinton, like, Natick, like, whatever. You guys have – do is it tradition for, like, most people to go out and watch the race and get, like, a good vantage point? uh yeah i mean before covid ever like yeah. i would go there every every year and it would be packed like shoulder to shoulder everywhere on like the town common and right up by the by the start line so it'd be it would be a great environment up there mm. final question for you guys um because i do I, I wish we could go forever but i do have to go somewhere um what would your advice be to a little hiller out there a little middle school kid watching this interview and said man these guys, Zach, Nate, and Evan, I want to be a varsity basketball player. I want to play just like these guys. What would your advice be to them to, to do what you're doing now? Uh, yeah, just to keep practicing. I mean, I was at a really young age, go to the Bliss Camp over the summer. Uh, some of the high school guys coached there. I mean, I was a counselor there this summer, and I would always think they're like the coolest guys ever. And uh, you just got to keep practicing, practicing, and practicing because eventually, like, you will be one of those guys. So, uh, yeah, 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 I would say like, just like take advantage of every opportunity you get. Like my freshman year, like I put in so much work going into freshman year and then all my buddies made JV as a freshman and I was on the freshman team. And like, at first I was like, damn, like this sucks. But then I just like took advantage of it and it like 
pushed me to be better. And like that freshman season helped me in so many ways. And then it just like continued me to keep going and keep getting better. And then it like set me up for success. Um, I would say that if, if you want to achieve anything that you, you have to like, you have to, the grind can't stop. Like if you stop and wait, uh, other people will catch up and you'll just, you'll just keep getting worse um, in comparison to the rest of the people. Like you have to keep um, working on your game, you know, you know, like working on your game a lot and you know, the results will come. You just have to be consistent. And then I think that you can, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. It's well said. Believe, in yourself. believe in yourself. Well said. I like it boys. Hawkington boys basketball. Thanks so much for coming on the Young Shakespeare podcast. Thank you for having us. That has been this episode of the Young Shakespeare podcast. I appreciate Hopkins Boys Basketball for coming out and uh, doing the podcast. Everyone should go grab a ticket to that uh, Friday night home game against Norwood and uh, tune in for the next episode of the podcast.